It looks like there's a freaking rat's nest in this thing. Look at this. Oh my gosh, look how full of water this thing is. The, the gel coat and pieces of the boat, there's just a massive crack. There's this, it's pushing itself out. Today we're gonna find out everything that's wrong with the bass cap. Did I actually strike a crazy good deal with this boat or did I just completely enter myself into a disaster money pit? Well, we're gonna find out right here, right now. So today we're gonna be looking at the Bass Cat Pantera 2. If you guys were on Team Bass Cat, shout out Team Bass Cat, cause I'm part of Team Bass Cat. If you guys were Team Tidecraft, don't worry, we're gonna have some videos coming on that soon. Today we're gonna be looking over everything that could potentially be wrong with the Bass Cat. I literally did not open a single compartment. I didn't really look at anything. I wanted this boat so bad that I literally just bought it. So today we're pretty much gonna find out if I actually got a killer deal or if I just purchased a disaster. The number one thing that I noticed right off the bat that's wrong with this boat is the clear coat. And I showed this in the last video, but the clear coat is literally peeling off everywhere. That's gonna be something we're gonna have to figure out another day. If you guys have any product recommendations or any ideas for getting clear coat off, please leave me a comment down below and let me know. You guys wanna see what it looks like underneath the boat? Cause this is what has me the most nervous. I didn't actually get underneath it and see if there's anything wrong with the hull. All right, now don't get me wrong. I don't expect this boat to be perfect underneath here, but I do have some worries. This is literally the first time I'm getting up underneath here. I hope I don't find something terrible. Oh, all right. Honestly, it's not looking too bad. There's this, the gel coat is missing and there is fiberglass exposed, but it's not a real deep gouge. And it looks like under here, we got a few more, but that's nothing too crazy. Honestly, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think this is rough? But from my experience with people going in shallow water and stuff with bass boats, I don't see that being too big of a deal. We got like another one right here. For the most part, down the main part of the hull, it's looking pretty good. So at some point, we're probably gonna have to redo some things underneath it, maybe throw some gel coat on there, but the good news is this boat is, uh, it's white. So when it comes to gel coat, white's a pretty easy color to get my hands on, so I'm honestly not too worried about it. Now, let's show you guys what the inside's looking like. All right, so let's check out what's going on in the bow. Now, like I was telling you guys before, I literally didn't even open a single compartment. So right here are extensions to the deck. I believe that might actually be on backwards. I'm not quite sure, but these are deck extensions that obviously never got carpeted, so I don't really know what's going on there, but fiberglass is solid, so we're probably just gonna recarpet the entire deck. Now there's one funny thing that I can't believe I didn't notice when I bought this thing and that was the fact that somebody has clearly redone this deck before or at least redid the carpet. If you guys look down here, you could tell that when they redid the carpet, they never put the latches back in. That's interesting, not sure what that was about. Maybe they thought it was easier to open without it, but um, we don't have latches. so. Don't really know what's going on there. This compartment right here on the side, I believe is a rod locker and there's actually some stuff in here. Look at that. What is this, a boat seat? It looks like we have a, a butt seat as they call it that uh, you sit on when you're fishing with the trolling motor. It looks like there's actually another, these are both brand new butt seats. Look at that. They're very dirty, but it looks like we got two brand new butt seats. That's a, that's a score. I'll take that. And uh, what is this, some muffs for the engine, a stick, roller for the trailer, and then we got a navigation light. But other than that, it's not that bad in here. It could use a vacuuming, but the carpet's actually really solid on the inside. There's this little compartment and it's full of water. I don't know what this is for. Maybe like sunglasses, or like soft plastics, I don't really know. If you guys know what this compartment's for, please let me know because I've never seen a small like plastic compartment like this. It's pretty interesting. It looks like we have a live well. This looks like a, either a bait tray or a live well. It kind of looks pretty small to be holding your bass in there, but it's definitely, uh, definitely a live well of some sort. This one on the side here. Oh my gosh, this is insane. So, it looks like there's some 
I mean, look at that. If that doesn't tell you how long those been sitting in there, I don't know what does. We got some rusty hardware. And uh, look at this. How funny is that? So they obviously had the intention of putting the uh, latches back on and never did. So that's cool. At least we got the latches here. Guys, it looks like there's a freaking rat's nest in this, in this thing. Look at this. Huh! I'm just kidding. <laughs> just like... Honestly, guys, I'm not kidding you. All jokes aside, there's a squirrel or something that was making a nest in here. It is just full of like, I don't even know. <sighs> it smells disgusting. The person I bought this off of told me it was stored in a garage. I'm starting to believe that that wasn't true. All right, and then we got one more compartment and that's this guy right here. I'm assuming this is like bow storage and yikes. This thing is full of water. This isn't a live well, is it? Nope, that's bow storage. Oh my gosh, look how full of water this thing is. Oh man. And there's also, someone dropped something in here. The, the gel coat and pieces of the boat. There's just a massive crack. We gotta get this water out of here ASAP. That could be a really, really bad sign that this thing's completely broken and it's full of water. I mean, looking in here, I don't know if you guys could tell, but right down in here, this is all cracked. This is literally flaking. I mean, it's it's like cracked. I don't even wanna play with it. Not super thrilled about that. We're gonna have to figure that out. Having like a hole or a crack in there, probably not a good situation. Coming back here. The seats, they're pretty trashed. I don't know if I wanna try and reupholster them myself. That is something that I've never done, but I mean, they definitely are dry rotted. I mean, there's no way that this upholstery is gonna get fixed. So we're either gonna have to get completely new seats or try and tackle this ourselves. Literally the back of these seats aren't even connected. So that's that. One thing that it's completely missing and I gotta figure out is the fact that it doesn't have a lid to one of the live wells. So if you guys look right here, this, this live well has a lid and these are separate live wells. This one has one, but this one doesn't. This is literally stuck in there. This is, I'm assuming it was a pull to one of the seats that was back here. No matter how hard I've tried, I can't get it out. So that might be rusted in there. I'm not exactly sure. So I'm gonna make sure I don't accidentally sit on that or something, because that thing is dangerous. Back here is the gas tanks. These things have seen better days. I'm gonna take that whole compartment off. I mean, it's not awful but it's definitely not good. These gas tanks, I think they'll actually clean up. It just, it's gonna need a lot of degreasing. The engine is a two stroke, so we got the two stroke canister in there. Hopefully that's all hooked up still. We got our bilge pumps, our live well pumps. Hopefully all those hoses are solid and not leaking, but yeah. Then we have the battery over here. It did come with a battery, but I just put this one in from my John boat. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna attach this battery and find out if this bad boy works. I just dropped this in here now. This is like the number one thing I'm nervous about. Oh, that's not ideal, all right. Okay, there's definitely a bilge pump on or something. Flip some of those switches and see if it turns anything off. Oh, wow, first try. Nice! Sounds like the bilge pump works, that's good. Okay. So we have the power hooked up. Honestly, this was like my biggest concern because I didn't actually get to really transom test this thing because it has a transom saver on it and I couldn't trim it up. So it looks like this boat has rear trim back here, I think. I think that's what this button is. Oh, ooh! That's weird. It like took a minute for it to grab, but all right. There we go. All right. Good news, trim, it's working. It's kind of crazy, it's like automatic. We're solid. I, I just went for it because I didn't see any pressure cracks or anything within the transom. Plus it's got a jack plate, so so long as that was installed correctly, I think we should have been fine, but I don't see any 
any stress in it here at all, I don't think. So that's relieving. It seems like the transom's in really solid shape. I'm not getting any kind of flexing or anything like that. So that was my biggest concern was like, oh my gosh, what if I bought this thing and it had just a crappy transom? I'm like double checking up here. Yeah, I mean, it's solid. There's one thing that you guys will see that came on this boat that made me feel like I got my money's worth if it works. We have a power lift jack plate. Now I've never had a jack plate before on a boat. Now there's another tab here that goes up and down and I'm assuming this is for the jack plate. That is sweet. Jack plates are not cheap for those of you guys who don't know. Check this out. Now, there's a bunch of other switches and stuff in here that I don't really understand. Um, it seems like the master power to the dash. Oh, the dash works. No way. Let's go. Check this out. Oh my gosh. I wonder if the speedometer and RPMs actually work. If they're actually hooked up, that is so sick. There's like so many random switches on here and I don't know what they do or what they're for, but okay, that's the bilge. Uh, I'm thinking that might be the live wells. Well, part of the dashboard works. One live well works, the trim works. Now my only other concern was this. Does the throttle cables, well, they're not too bad. I was worried about the throttle cables potentially being a mess, but honestly, they're probably, they're not bad when they're engaged, but going to neutral is tough and going to drive is tough. Do you notice how it's pushing it? Look at this. It's pushing itself out when I push it forward. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. We'll see. Maybe we just need an oiling of the throttle cables, but that's not good. Look at the whole thing just popped off. All right. We're going to need some work done here on throttle cables. That's not good, but we do have power to some of the boat. So I'm pretty happy about that. Unfortunately, I can't try to turn the engine over because we don't have a key for it yet, but I did order a new ignition, so we will be putting that in very soon. But let's take a look at what it looks like underneath the hood. All right, underneath we got a GT150 Johnson V6 engine. It actually doesn't look too bad. Um, there's definitely leaves and stuff in here that should not be in there, but I don't really know what to look at in an engine like on the surface. I think what we'll end up doing here is potentially taking out the spark plugs. Spark plugs, coils usually will help with a tune up. We'll probably take off this panel right here. We have six carburetors, one, two, three, and then three more on the other side. So we're gonna have to uh, make sure those things are cleaned out before we fire this up. But honestly, everything seems pretty solid. For, for a 1996, you know, I don't expect it to look perfect underneath here. Here's our throttle cable and our linkage cable. Those we're probably going to have to deal with. Ooh. All right, so that about sums up everything that I can at least see on the surface that is wrong with the Bass Cat. The next step is to start tearing things apart and get working on it. If you guys are on Team Bass Cat, we're gonna get this thing looking spick and span. But if you guys have any information or input, please leave me a comment down below. I could use your help. I need suggestions. I don't know everything about boats and I'd also love to put some of your input into this boat. So maybe you guys have some cool ideas that I'm not thinking of. We might be able to, you know, throw them in here. With that being said, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me here on Tightline TV. We're gonna get this thing started next video. If you're new here, do me a favor, smash the subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.